Welcome back to the Wandering Wind Church. Today we are reading through the Life Recovery Devotional. And today we are on Step 1, Day 12. The title of this reading is Desperate for Love. And the reading for today is Genesis 29, 16 through 35. We admitted that we were powerless over our dependencies and that our lives had become unmanageable. We'll do almost anything to gain the love we need, which may have been denied us as children or in our marriage. Maybe the pain and sadness over our powerlessness to attract the love we desperately need drive us to find a way to deaden the pain. Leah was a plain girl with a beautiful younger sister and a scheming father. Her father tricked Jacob into marrying Leah. He then allowed Jacob to also have her sister Rachel. So Jacob slept with Rachel too, and he loved her much more than Leah. When the Lord saw that Leah was unloved, he enabled her to have children, but Rachel could, con could not conceive. So Leah became pregnant and gave birth to a son. She named him Reuben, for, he's, for she said, The Lord has noticed my misery, and now my husband will love me. She soon became pregnant again and gave birth to another son. She named him Simeon, for he, she said, The Lord heard that I was unloved and has given me another son. Then she became pregnant a third time and gave birth to another. She named him Levi, for she said, Surely this time my husband will feel affection for me, since I have given him three sons. We may be powerless to make someone love us. Spending our lives trying to produce something to make us worthy of their love. This need might gnaw away at us and lead to relapse when the pain becomes overwhelming. When people won't love us, we can learn to draw upon the love of God. For he loves us as we are. Drawing on God's unconditional love and grace can, feel our, can fill our need to be wanted. Um... Wow, this one hits home. <laughs> this one hits home because I, I, uh, I've had, I've had a broken relationship with my father for years. Um, part of it was just the the nature of being an addict and being an alcoholic. He was never a, uh, never able to be emotionally available like I wanted him to be, like I so desperately wanted him to be. He was present physically but he was never present emotionally and so for years I thought to myself what did I do why am I not enough well on the other side of recovery I understand now it's not so much that I was never enough it's that he couldn't people in addiction can't see the harm they're doing to other people through their actions and they also can't see and sometimes can't make emotional connections with people because the the addiction clouds their minds and just dulls the senses even emotions are dulled I remember year from the years of my drinking my emotions were dim compared to what they are now. I still felt, I still emoted, and I even still had empathy for people. But I did not love people in the way I should have. I did not care for people in the way I could have. I did not connect with people on a level that I could have if I'd have been sober and able to not go for another. And so... The fact that I could not form those connections with people in my addiction now informs me of how my father can't do anything about it either. If I can't do anything about it, when if I couldn't do anything about it when I was in that kind of state, how could I expect my father, who does not know Christ yet, to do any better? There, there are people in our lives that have done that. There are people in our lives that 
have left us wanting, desperately wanting to have a relationship with them, but because they are emotionally unavailable, because they are emotionally unable, incapable of forming that bond with us. They can't. They literally can't. And so that is why I am so adamant about healing yourself first. Letting God heal you first. And then allowing that healing to help others heal. Whether it's people that you've had broken relationships with. Because I'll tell you what, I have seen people that have had broken relationships restored when they've come to recovery. When they've achieved a level of recovery that maybe they've never been able to before. Because they've finally gotten to the place where they're like, yes, I'm ready to let God take away all my defects of character. I'm ready to give God care of my life and just let him control. I'm ready to take a self-inventory and just get everything onto the table off of it and just say, you know what? I'm giving up all these things that I know I've done wrong, but I'm seeking forgiveness and then I'm letting go because I can't hold on to the past anymore. There are going to be people in your life that you won't heal the relationship with. I may never see a healed relationship with my father, but all I can do is pray that one day he knows the love of the Father like I do so that maybe he can heal too because I know there's some hurts that he carries. There are some hurts that he's carrying that maybe he shouldn't be that he, he, he might be able to heal from. So that's what I wanted to take away from you today. As always, I want to remind you that we do not recover by leaps and bounds but by every step forward that we make in God's power, not by ourselves, but through his power and through his grace. So do not seek perfection, seek progress. Because always, always, whether slowly or quickly, we are striving to move toward the goal, toward recovery. So don't be too hard on yourself. And don't be too hard on others either. Seek to be filled with grace. Thank you. And have a wonderful day. And a wonderful week. God bless you. And I'll see you again soon.